Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. I'm your host, Pat Sun, and today we're gonna be taking a look at r slash oh no consequences, where OP is shocked that her husband won't take her back after she cheated on him. Let's begin. Our first story was posted by Reddit user ThrowRABadWifey89. I know I did something awful and disgusting, and when I couldn't take the guilt anymore, I cut off my affair partner and confessed everything to my husband. He got more upset and depressed than angry, and I begged him not to divorce me. I proposed counseling, therapy, even allowing him to have sex with other women, but he wasn't interested. He said he wanted to try to work us out, and I jumped into being the best wife a man could ask for. I cook his favorite dishes, leave him loving notes, and bought new lingerie to entice him. His reactions are lukewarm at best. He smiles and thanks me, but not once has he said he loves me, me since I confessed. He barely initiates anything, and I basically have to push myself on him, not that he complains. Sometimes we talk about this, but I think I still lost the man I love. His behavior with me feels very artificial, and nothing changes his facade. I can be playful, I can be sad, I can get angry, and I can get seductive. His reaction is always this stupid smile and polite words. He was so emotional and sincere before all of this happened. I want him to let out his true emotions with me, even if he hates me. I still love him so much. What can I do to fix this? TLDR, I cheated on my husband. He didn't get angry and is always kind to me, but I feel he's become indifferent to me. Update 1. He knows I cheated. We didn't separate, and I begged him not to divorce me and let me fix this. He agreed, but his behavior since my confession has basically been one of indifference. Like I wrote in my last post, I do my best to be the best wife he could ask for. I cook his favorite foods, get him gifts, screw his brains out every night. He just smiles and thanks me. He acts kind and never yells at me, but I feel his icy indifference under that mask of courtesy. Two weeks ago, he started coming home late, very late. And when he does, he just goes to bed. I asked him what's going on, and he told me in the kindest way possible that it's not my business. I call him when he stays out, and he picked up only once. I heard a woman laughing in the background. I am starting to think he is cheating back on me. It fucking hurts. If he told me, at least I would do my best to stomach it. I deserve this, after all. But he won't tell me. He just shuts me out. A mutual friend told me she spotted him in a car with a woman she didn't recognize, and this felt like a stab in the heart. She said she couldn't describe her exactly because she wore big sunglasses, but she recognized my husband because of his particular taste in neckties. They were talking, but my friend said that from their position, it looked like they were holding hands or one of them was touching the other's lap. I don't know what to do. If he is having an affair, I deserve it, but I need to know. The uncertainty is killing me. Should I confront him? Should I try to find out more? TLDR, I cheated on my husband. Now I think he's cheating back. Final update. He left me. I did like you guys said and begged him to talk to me. He didn't want to, but I cried and yelled so much I puked all over. He softened with me, helped me clean up, and we talked. I asked him if he was cheating on me, and he said he was talking with someone but didn't do anything with her. I asked if she was the woman my friend saw him with. He thought about it a little, but said no. It was another woman whom he met a month ago in his office. I asked him how he could do this and said I gave him permission, and he didn't do anything besides unloading his problems and our situation with her. But he played it like he was having a full affair, so I could feel what he felt, especially because, according to him, I neglected him and made it obvious I was cheating on him. He said he was suffering and I was almost rubbing it in his face. I told him I wasn't doing it on purpose, and he said this was even worse because I didn't care at all. He said that everything I did after confessing meant nothing and just made him think I am selfish, self-centered, and lack any sort of self-respect. I asked him if we could work on myself and our marriage, but he said we can have counseling to sort ourselves out but the marriage is over. He said he wishes no ill on me and decided to cut his charade because he could no longer bear to let the woman he once loved suffer like that. But he said, I am no longer that woman. I started sobbing again and he held me, but he kept saying no when I asked him if we could work this out. I asked him what he was going to do and he's moving out. He already found a new place. 
I asked him if he was going to live with that woman, and he said no, but she was close enough. I asked him how he could pick a total stranger he met a month ago over his wife of five years. He said his wife of five years no longer exists. He has to pick between two strangers, and that woman made a much better impression on him. I told him he was a fool, and he could not know this woman will probably use and dump him. He got harsh and said, she's better than me, for sure. He said he won't say to our families that our marriage ended because I cheated, but because we grew apart, and that he will leave the house to me as long as I make the divorce smooth. But if I try to take him to the cleaners, drag it out, or cause any problems, he will tell everyone what I did and destroy me and my reputation. This happened yesterday, and he has already packed up almost everything. I can't stop crying, and I can't believe this is happening. This is horrible and unfair. Well, would you look at that. The woman who had an affair is going to cry about how horrible it is that your husband did the exact same thing to you and is now leaving. You got exactly what you deserve. The fact that you still can't see that points to a shocking lack of self-reflection. Make the divorce smooth. Let the man go and stop being a disgusting human being for once in your pathetic life. You ask why he would leave his wife of five years for a complete stranger. Jeez, man. I don't know. It probably has to do with the fact that you've been fucking other men? I don't know. That's just a guess. But the fact that you're playing victim now speaks volumes about your already shitty character. Our second story was posted by Reddit user Major Box. Disclaimer. This is a really funny story. I promise. I, 18 m I am a waiter and host at a restaurant called Perkins Restaurant and Bakery and have been working there since May of 2023. I usually serve in the evenings and host in the mornings. The job has its ups and downs, but overall it really has been good to me so far. The only downs I have are the difficult customers that come in and show their behinds. Here's a story of one that I will never forget. About four months ago, I happened to be serving during an evening. Everything was going great so far until a table of four had come in. The main character, entitled Lady of this table, I will call E. E happened to come a little later after the other three had arrived. Once all there, I took drink orders and food orders. One of the guests at the table was an older man who seemed to show some signs of mental or cognitive decline due to age. This is not meant to be an insult, this detail is just relevant to the story. And E was speaking for him and ordering for him, which was totally fine and understandable. Everything started out perfect, and they were all pretty nice until the food was served. E had ordered the pancake meal, but with a strawberry glaze with strawberry pieces to go over it for the older man. She herself had ordered something different. When traying up the food before serving it, I put some of the glaze in a little black cup. That way they could spread it over as they wished. Uh, when I came out with the food, it was like a mask slipped with E. She then began to put on a ridiculous performance. All right, and here is everyone's food. I proceeded to hand out the plates. Immediately switches to hostile attitude mode. Um, this is not right. That's not how the strawberry pancakes are served. Assuming she meant that the strawberry mixture was not the right kind. Politely explains, yes, this is the correct glaze for the strawberry pancakes. No, it's not. I come here every week, and this is not how it's served. This glaze is watery and has no strawberry pieces. Admittedly, the portion I gave was more liquidy rather than having more strawberry pieces, but... It was still the same strawberry glaze that we are supposed to serve over pancakes. During certain times of the year, we do have special meal options and deals as our monthly or seasonal specials. During the summer months, we did have a bigger strawberry special where we had many different strawberry breakfast meals. Cheesecake, pancakes, crepes, French toast. But the difference was that these meals used fresh strawberries with a separate and different glaze that we would mix together ourselves. This special had ended not too long before this day. I explained this to E because I then assumed that that was what she was in reference to, but no, getting unnecessarily angry. No, this is not how it's served. We come here every week and, uh, uh, you know what, we will never come back here again. Continues to try and explain to her about the then recently ended special and how we have to serve the alternative, less elaborate one for regular pancakes. Yeah. Cutting me off impatiently and rudely. Nope. We will never come back here again and we were weekly lunch customers. I did go back to the kitchen to get another cup for her that had some more strawberry pieces in it, and that was thicker, in addition to the other cup she was displeased with. 
I go back to the table with the cup. She now switches to a condescending tone. You're doing everything you can, sir, but we will never come back again. I've never, never been so disappointed before. It's obvious that you're new here. Me, growing impatient but keeping my composure. Actually, I've been here for a year. This is true. Q, condescending dramatic gasp. A year? Nods. By this point, E is being unnecessarily loud and rude, and most, if not all, of the nearby customers were watching this cartoonish spectacle being displayed by a middle-aged white woman. You know what? He, the older man, orders the strawberry pancakes every time we come here, and he was so excited when I told him we were coming to Perkins today, and you know what he did after I told him? He went like this. She then proceeded to make a dumb smiley face and clap her hands like she is a child who just got a new toy at the toy store. Mind you, this is, again, a middle-aged white woman who is acting the part. Uh, continuing her performance and now proceeding to try and lecture me like a parent. Don't, don't do that to him. The two other people at the table, not including the older man, co-signing this nonsense. Mmm. He was so excited for his pancakes and ridiculously rude. Get N and get him, the older man, some whipped cream. N is who I will be referring to the other waitress as. She was also working the same shift as me. I turn to the kitchen and grab N and briefly give her the rundown about the situation. We walk back to the table. E then explains her side to N, polite but in agreement with me. The food is fine. Here, all you have to do is this. N then proceeded to pour the two cups of strawberry glaze over the man's pancakes, which would have only required 5% of E's brain power and coordinated motor skills, therefore preventing all of this mess. But no, let's never be reasonable with a food service worker. That would have required too much of her. And he needs his whipped cream. Another nearby customer in uncalm down tone. Well, they're getting it for you. N comes back with the whipped cream and goes to tend to her tables. E continues to complain over nothing and make a scene. Uh, yeah, we will never come back here again. And we were weekly lunch customers. <sighs> Completely disgusted, fed up, and not caring about professionalism at all at this point. You know what? This is probably extremely unprofessional, but I don't really care. If you're going to sit there and throw a temper tantrum, then I'd rather you not come back again. That's it. She slams her hands on the table as she gets up. I thought I was about to be attacked. I'm not paying. Perfect. Have a God-blessed day. Gotta hit the demons with the Lord. He grabs the older man who was in a wheelchair, and she storms off with him. One of the two remaining guests at the table, a seemingly country hick, in a southern drawl, well, I'm gonna eat my food, and I ain't gonna pay either. I just walked off. I did tell the manager, I'll call her M, during this shift about what happened, and that E left while shouting that she's not paying. M did her best to smooth things over at the table and give them some discounts, just so they would pay for the entire bill that E left them with. Unfortunately, if a customer refuses to pay and we are left with an open table, open check, on our electronic register, management could get in serious trouble with corporate. N took over serving my table from there. I really do feel bad for the older man. He was not causing any problems at all and I had no problem with him whatsoever. Also, while I definitely understand E speaking and advocating for him like many others would do for those who really need it, you can't be cruel and vicious to others just to do that. Thankfully, I did, did not get in trouble from this situation at all. All of the other shift managers found out about the situation soon after, but they were all on my side. I was proud of myself for telling E off, even though I didn't say anything all that profound. I really think workplaces need to normalize talking back to unbearable customers without stooping to their level. We do not get paid enough to tolerate it. Entitled customer at Perkins Restaurant and Bakery was angry with how another person's meal was served and made a huge scene in public over it. I then told her off and she left without paying for her meal. Damn, it sounds like that woman got whipped into a frenzy. Huh? Huh? No? Well, anyways, as someone who served tables before, I definitely agree with politely talking back to a Karen. Some people just forgot how to grow up despite being as old as a fossil. Viewer support is the best way for me to remain independent and continue bringing you these daily videos, which will always be here on my channels for you to watch absolutely free. So please consider subscribing to me on Rumble and on YouTube. Both will be linked in the description box down below. Thanks for listening everyone. If you even somewhat enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you really like it, consider subscribing to Pat's Hunt to never miss a future upload. Stay strong.